What is going on guys? This is Britter back with the Odin Project and today we're going to be working on links and images. Links are one of the key features of HTML. They allow us to link to other HTML pages on the web. In fact, this is why it's called the web. In this lesson, we will learn how to create links and add some visual flair to our websites by embedding images. Lesson overview. This section contains a general overview of topics that you will learn in this session. How to create links to pages on other websites on the internet how to create links to other pages on your own websites, the difference between absolute and relative links, and how to display an image on web page using HTML. To get some practice using links and images throughout this lesson, we need an HTML project to work on. I went ahead and created this new directory and I created the file. And so we're going to slide this over here like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the boilerplate um, fill in the usual HTML boilerplate, finally add the following h1 to the body. So we're going to add h1 home page. Anchor elements. To create a link in HTML, we use the anchor element. An anchor element is defined by wrapping the text or another HTML element we want to be a link with an A tag. Add the following to the body of the index dot html page we created and open it in the browser all right so we got the h1 element and now we're going to add a click me we're going to save it and then we're going to drag it over here all right You may have noticed that clicking this link doesn't do anything. This is because an anchor tag on its own won't know where we want to link to. We have to tell it a destination to go to. We do this by using an HTML attribute. An HTML attribute gives additional information to an HTML element and always goes in the element's ta opening tag. An attribute is usually made up of two parts, a name and a value. However, not all attributes require a value. In our case, we need to add a hair of hyperlink reference attribute to the opening anchor tag. The value of the Harif attribute is the destination we want our link to go. Add the following Harif attribute to the anchor element we created previously and try clicking it again. Don't forget to refresh the browser so the new changes can be applied. So we're going to go in here and we're going to do a Harif equals https dot slash slash www.theodinproject.com slash about. All right, so we're going to save that and then refresh. And then when we click this, it takes us, should take us to the Odin about me page. About page, not about me. It's running very slowly. So I know it's going there, it's just really slow. And I'm not sure why, it might be my virtual machine. I'm not sure. All right, we'll go ahead and continue. Um, by default, any text wrapped with an anchor tag without a hair of attribute will look like plain text. If the hair of attribute is present, the browser will give the text a blue color and underline it to signify it is a link, which it's done there. It's worth noting you can use anchor tags to link any kind of resource on the internet, not just other HTML documents. You can link to videos, PDF files, images, and so on. But for the most part, you'll be linking to other HTML documents. Absolute and relative links. Generally, there are two kinds of links we will create. Links to pages on other websites on the internet. Links to pages located on our own websites. Absolute links. Links to pages on other websites on the internet are called absolute links. A typical absolute link will be made up of the following parts. Protocol, domain, path. An absolute link will always contain the protocol and domain of the destination. We've already seen an absolute link in action. The link we created to the Odin Project's about page earlier was an absolute link as it contains the protocol and domain. 
Relative links. Links to other pages within our own website are called relative links. Relative links do not include the domain name. Since it is another page on the same site, it assumes the domain name will be the same as the page we created the link on. Relative links only include the file path to the other page, relative to the page you are creating the link on. This is quite abstract. Let's see this in action using an, using an example. Within the Odin links and images directory, create another HTML file named about.html and paste the following code into it. Alright, so we're going to do a new file. And it's going to be called about.html. And we're going to save that here. And then we'll copy and paste this info into there. Copy and paste. Back in the index page, add the following anchor element to create a link to the about me page. So we're going to go here and then we're going to do this. Oops, undo, 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 copy and paste. All right. Open the index file in a browser and click on the about link to make sure it is all wired together correctly. So let's make sure that both of these are saved. I'm not sure why this website's not working. Um, that's kind of odd. Well, let's just go ahead and drag this in here. All right, click me and then about. And it takes you to the about page. Clicking the link should go to the about page we just created. This works because the index and about page are in the same directory. That means we can simply use its name about.html as the links here value, but we will usually want to organize our website directories a little better. Normally we would only have the index.html at the root directory and all other HTML files in their own directory. Create a directory named Pages within the Odin Links and Images directory and move the About file into this new directory. So let's go to our File Manager here and we're going to add a new directory and this is going to be called Pages and then it says to move the About Me into the Pages. Refresh the index page in the browser and then click on the about link. Refresh. Um, let's make sure it's saved. And then refresh. Okay. Alright, refresh the index page in the browser and then click on the about link. It will now be broken. This is because the location of the about page file has changed. To fix this, we just need to update the about link here file value to include the pages directory since that is a new location of the about, about file relative to the index file. So on index, we have to change a here of about We have to change this part and put pages slash about. And now let's save that. And now let's refresh. And it's back. In many cases, this will work just fine. However, you can still run into unexpected issues with this approach. Pretending slash before the link will pending slash before the link will in most cases prevent such issues. By adding slash you are specifying to your code that it should start looking for the file directory relative to the current directory. A metaphor. Absolute and relative links are a tricky concept to build a good mental model of. A metaphor may help. Think of your domain name, town.com, as a town. The directory in which your website is located slash museum as a museum and each page on your website as a room in the museum. 
Relative links are directories from the current room, the museum movie room, to another room, the museum shop. Absolute links, on the other hand, are full directory directions, including the protocol, HTTPS domain name, and the path from that domain name. Images. Websites would be fairly boring if they could only display text. Luckily, HTML provides a wide variety of elements for displaying all sorts of different media. The most widely used of these is the image element. To display an image element, image in HTML, we use the image element. Unlike the other elements we have encountered, the image element is self-closing. Empty self-clothing HTML elements do not need a closing tag. Instead of wrapping content with an opening and closing tag, it embeds an image into the page using a source attribute, which tells the browser where the image file is located. The source attribute works much like the hair attribute for anchor tags. It can embed an image using both absolute and relative paths. For example, using an absolute path, we can display an image located on the Odin project site. To use images that we have on our own websites, we can use a relative path. Create a new directory named images within the Odin Links Images project. All right, so we're going to create a new one called images. Next, download this image and move it onto the images directory we just created. All right, so we're going to put this there. All right. Rename the image to dog.jpg. Dog.jpg. Rename. Finally, add the image to the index file. Okay, and so below the about, we're going to do image source equals images slash dog.jpg. And self close. Save the index file and open it in a browser to view Charles in all his glory. So we're going to control, control S for save and then we're going to drag it, oops, drag it over. Now I'm not seeing Charles. Let's refresh it. Did I save this? I did save it. Let's go back and make sure that I didn't mess that up. Oh, so this is kind of annoying. When I type something here, it adds the end one, and then I didn't pay attention, so that got messed up. So I had two. So let's refresh this, and there he is. Look at Charles. All right, parent directories. What if we want to use the dog image in the about page? We would first have to go up one level out of the pages directory into its parent directory so we could then access the images directory. To go to the parent directory, we need to use two dots in the relative file path like this. Let's see this in action. Within the body of the about.html file, add the following image below the heading we added earlier. All right, so we're gonna add image source equals, and then we do dot dot slash images slash dog dot jpeg. And let's go ahead and save that. To break this down, first we're going to get, we're going to the parent directory of the pages directory, which is own links and images. Then from the parent directory, we can go into the images directory. Found that we can access the dog j dot jpeg file. Using the metaphor we used earlier, dot dot slash, in a file path, it's kind of like stepping out from the room you're currently in to the main hallway so you can go to another room. So let's go ahead and see if this works. We're going to click about. Let me save that. Let me save this because it didn't pop up when I did that. We got that and then we click about. And it did not pop up. So what's happening here? And why is this red? The HTML element represents the root of an HTML document. Image source equals dot dot slash images slash dog dot JPEG. 
Oh, we didn't have this closing bracket. Man, one thing. All right, let's click about. And it's still not pulling up, still not pulling up the dog here. Not quite sure why. About. Yeah, still no dog. All right, let's keep reading. Um, alt attribute. Besides the source attribute, every image element should also have an alt alternative text attribute. The alt attribute is used to describe an image. It will be used in place of the image if it cannot be loaded. It is also used with screen readers to describe what the image is to visually impaired users. This is how the Odin Project logo example we used earlier looks with an alt attribute included. As a bit of practice, add an attrib all attribute to the dog image we added to the Odin links and images project. So we're gonna do image source, and then there we're gonna do alt equals Charles the dog. Alt equals Charles the dog. Let's save this. Oops, not save as, cancel. Save and save. And I just want to check this one more time because it's kind of bothering me that that didn't work. Let me drag the about me. So the link, it's saying the link is broken but the link is still in the file. The image is still there, so I'm not sure why it's not loading the image, but also I think there's something going on with my web browser here and the web. Let's go ahead, I didn't mean to do that. Let's open that back up. And drag this over. Not to that one. Drag this over here. All right. I got some something funky happening. There we go. All right, let's click about. And it's still not pulling up the dog. I'm not sure why. But anyways, all right, so they've given us some assignments here, but we're going to watch these offline. So we're going to go ahead and mark this one complete, and I will see you guys on the next one.